Hey there. Well, I'm not doing so well. Um, that really destroyed me. It really did. And it's not just the, you know, having to go through with that. It's the fact that, well, Tyler was supposed to be take. you know, he, he took over ownership of Misty. Um would, you know, whenever I'd talk with them, I'd call them, how is Misty? Oh, she's fine. And it just, things seemed all right. And there's another dog there. Um, you know, things seemed all right. And I think when the three bears were still there, I think they were all right with Misty. But then uh, Tyler, you know, a few days ago, contacted me to tell me that uh, oh he needs to know her age and I didn't know why you know why he needed to know her age but uh, then I late then I find out you know a couple messages later that uh, oh yeah well, well the, the the pound needs to know her age I mean the pound what what's going on why are you taking her to the pound and he tells me about the uh, He had called me. He had talked to me about a month earlier and said that she's she's having you know she's having some problems as far as uh, you know she's in pain. But I, I just when I got there, she was laying in shit and piss. She hadn't, she probably hadn't been brushed in months, many months, same with any sort of bath, didn't have any of the stuff out of the corner of her eyes, you know, how they, they build up, you know, not, not even that was removed, none of that, it's like she was just sort of left in the garage, and I get told, well, you know, sometimes she might go out once in a while, and I understand, I mean, I, I understand not wanting a dog in the house if they're shitting and pissing, you know, on the floor. Fine. Right. I, I get that. But you don't just... It's like she was thrown away. And that really hurt me. That that just... That hurt so bad to see that. She was so... Misty was so happy to see my mother and I. And then, it, you know, it, she was so happy to see us. That it's the last time we'll ever see her. And it just, I, I. I mean, she had a, she. Everything was was so good when when it comes to her the the way the vet office did things. They were so nice. They were so kind. But I just I mean, at least she was. Uh... At least, at least she had some happiness before she went, you know? But I'm still just so angry at the way that she was when I saw her, when I saw her in the garage, and I'm just like, just, just what? Was she just neglected totally, and I just... I just I
I sure didn't want to give up Misty in 2014. But when I eventually moved back here, and we couldn't have her here at the house, because she would lay right in the way of where my mother is walking, and my mother is obviously, she's got some physical disabilities now, uh, and she fell over her twice, almost broke her hip, and you know we could we just couldn't have Misty at the house anymore. So someone else had to take, uh, had to take ownership. But I and I'm thankful that Tyler did. And it seemed that she was happy for a long time, but seeing her like I saw her in that garage just had me so upset. that had me upset but he was going to have her taken to the pound he wasn't going to even do the right thing it's just let's just let's just take her to the pound yeah that, that'll do it yeah then she could feel really really alone and die alone not around anyone that cares for her at all. It just had me so angry. I was so angry. I loved Misty so much. I loved her so much. I miss her so much. I didn't visit her very much because the household, I mean, so often that household was toxic as far as the mindsets are there. I knew they all cared about animals, but that household was toxic. That's why I moved away. I may, uh, I may look into getting another dog at some point. It's, uh, it's hard to beat the companionship of, of a dog. Hard to beat. She and I had some very good times together. I took her to so many places. I miss all the trail walks with her. I miss her so much. <sighs> I'll stop crying in your face. Thanks for watching. Then to top everything off, on the way home, my mother gets a call. Um, and the bank called her to let her know that the loan, uh, the home equity loan didn't go through. She was going to try to expand it from what she originally had so this stuff could be worked on in the house. Now that's not going to happen. We don't know what we're going to do about my brother. Have no idea. I don't think I don't think you can apply for Section Eight anymore. So, and, and there hasn't been anywhere to find a place for my brother.
my brother can fucking in all these years um, my mother and I are the ones to find his apartments because he just acts so helpless in those areas just like and the more you do for him the more that he expects you to do for him and his schizophrenia is just continues to get worse he starts telling us about all, all these white vehicles that are following him oh okay There's some sort. There's this little scent dispenser thing, which I I'm not a fan of. It's you know kind of like a. I mean, it's something that like you'd find in a, in a bathroom in a, in a public bathroom, at a fast food place, right? They got these little things on the wall, that goes, you know. And they have one of those in the hallway. Well, yeah, I wouldn't deal with that very well either. I would try to go through all the routes I could to hey say no. Can you, pl you know, this needs to be removed. This causes me allergies. This gives me problems. But anyway, he won't go through all the right motions. He'll just, um, develop conspiracy theories. So he thinks that every time he goes out, that there's some person below him that flips a little switch that makes the scent thing go off. Um, he has conspiracy theories that people come up to his door and spray stuff on it that he's being watched that he's and then he'll sit basics essentially sit on his hands all day because he thinks that if he does anything at his computer if he plays at his computer that his neighbor will hear that he's doing something and will make his life miserable at night. Now, there is a possibility there could be something like this, but it's kind of happened at more than one place. You know, from my brother's recollection. So it, it's just... I remember when he when he stayed here, when he was upstairs here for, for a while, I remember him just freaking out because some people that you can upstairs see from two and a half blocks away oh they might be looking into his place and judging the things that he's doing this is the guy that won't push a shopping cart because it might look gay right so you know and my mother is his payee because he's more messed up he's more messed up than I am and we don't know what we're going to do now because this this plan for the house here was going to be that was the thing that was that that you know was going to work it was I mean if it ended up not working then you know at that point we'd be like I, I'm sorry we, we can't do anything more for you my mother spends almost 400 fucking dollars a month So he can live the way that he wants. Maybe it's closer to 350 but I mean, she's spending money a month on him. Because his check doesn't, you know, doesn't stretch that far for, you know, the cost of apartments around here. She buys his cigarettes, she buys his insurance, she buys his internet connection, and she continually just gives him money. And again, you know, the, the more, you, more you do for him, the more he expects. But 
does this thing where he'll call and oh no I'm not calling for any particular reason I just want to see how you're doing and then of course by the end of the call it's oh I could really use this well that's the main reason why he called but he wants to just string you along well you well, what is it that you need well why are you framing it that way well because when you call you need something and then of course at the very end of the call oh by the way so you know that's what uh, you know we're, we're trying to we were trying to find some way that that wasn't going to have to be the case anymore but now we don't know what we're going to do and uh, I was looking forward to having the house split up because it would be nice to have my own actual space I don't feel like I have my own space here at all and I Someone could say, oh, that'd be nice to have someone like her. I don't want my mother to be a maid. I don't want her to be my maid. I don't want her to feel like she has to do all these things. You know, in relation to me, I don't want that. Um, I don't want to feel, and one of the big things for me is I don't like feeling like... It, you know, I, it's almost like I have to ask permission to go somewhere. Oh, let's write a note. And then if I say that I'm going, oh, well, are you sure you want to do that? And that, that's like, all right, well, 44 years old, I'm paying rent to be here. And it's not, it's like, it's not really my, you know, it's not really my space. And that's frustrating. And that was going to be something that was going to get taken care of. I've tried not to talk about it very much with my mother because I don't want her to feel like she's being, like she's has giving any sort of imposition or that she's any sort of hassle or that she's, I'm trying to make the last years of her life decent. And I'm not trying to push that in her face um, as she continues to get more disabled. So yeah, you know, this idea of splitting the house up just seemed great. It seemed great for all of us. And now that's not going to happen either. So now the plans are, well, maybe... Maybe we can sell this house and there is a, a town in uh, New York called Dunkirk... And she has a, a friend there. She has a good friend there. Housing is very cheap there, but there's not really much around there. But housing is very cheap there. She has a friend there, and she could travel for a few hours and visit other friends there that are, you know, close to there. This would give her a chance to have, you know, to actually have a social life. I think it would probably be good for her to not be at this house anymore either because of all the memories that are associated with this house. Um, and I don't per particularly have anything keeping me here. So maybe we can find a house out there that's cheap because, I mean, housing in, in Dunkirk is cheap. Maybe we can find a duplex of sorts. And we can do things that way. Or a house that's been converted. Uh, last year, we slightly, for a period of time, we were looking into houses in, in Dunkirk. And there was this one house that would have been perfect for us. Um, you know, I would have had the, the upstairs. She'd have the downstairs. Um things could be complete be made completely uh, uh, disabled accessible and uh, you know for her and uh, you know so maybe that's our next uh, plan maybe that's maybe that's what we've got to do maybe we just got to sell this house and start looking into real estate over there that's affordable and then some of the money that she gets from this house she could get some sort of a uh, either a you know a, a, a trailer or a tiny tiny mobile home and uh, p put my brother in a cheap mobile home park. Cheap little trailer park. And, uh, and call it good that way, right? So, today was not a good day. 
at all.